Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Shaylee and today we are going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag for 2021. I don't think I've ever done this tag personally, but I'm excited to just do something fun. So let's just get right into it. Um, the very first question is the best book you've read in 2021. For me, this is pretty easy. I'm going to say this, I guess I said it's pretty easy, but I'm going to go with this because it's the best book most recently that I can remember reading, and that is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. This is my first Kristen Hanna book. I have stayed away from historical fiction like The Plague. I feel like that's a pun not intended <laughs> but um now I want to pick up everything Kristen Hanna has ever written because this book was amazing I have really gotten into like listening to books while reading them physically so that is what I did with this book and the person who I'm so bad I forget every time let me look right now the person who narrates this book is my favorite narrator of all time she has narrated some of my favorite books ever let me get her name if you didn't know if you have libby you can look up the narrator and then it also gives a list of every book they narrate and it's just the best thing ever like i know she does seven of the seven husbands of evelyn hugo which i absolutely love she did the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Julia, oh no. <laughs> I will pop her name here because I don't know how. Uh, Julia Whalen, maybe? Yes, some of my favorite books of all time. Let me also just double check. Let me go into my Goodreads because I feel like there may be some other choices. Oh! <gasps> Oh, I forgot that that was this year. How could I forget? Okay, there is a tie. Let me... These two. These are two of, like, my newest favorite books of all time. The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. Amazing. Both of these books are just emotional and just everything that I wanted. This, obviously, historical fiction, Dream Daughter is a little bit, I don't even know what you classify it as, like, not fantasy, not historical, not, I don't know, sci-fi maybe? It's kind of like an alternate reality, timeline jumping, time traveling type of thing. I don't even know how to pitch this book other than it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's so good. And actually, does the same narrator do this book? Possibly. I can't remember. Anyways, these two. The best. Next up, best sequel you've read so far in 2021. I have not read any of my sequels this year. I have a lot that I do need to read, but I have not read any of them yet. <laughs> I don't think I haven't read any new release you haven't read yet but want to all right my collection is vast from book of the month let's see probably the one I am most excited for is probably the maidens by Alex Michaelis I have Malibu Rising and I feel like that would probably be the right answer but I've just heard mixed things we're going with the maidens but it's interesting because I did read The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelitis a couple years ago and everybody talked about how amazing it was I mean it was fine but I didn't find it that interesting actually so we'll see maybe I don't jive with Alex who knows 
The most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I am so bad at this kind of stuff. I really want to get my hands on All Is Well, who this is called, Mona Awad's newest book. That one I think sounds really good. I'm trying to think anything else. Uh, let me hop on Amazon. I know I have a couple pre-orders sitting on my wish list. I don't know really anything about this, but The Death of Jane Lawrence I have on here. I'm sure someone has pitched these at some point, and so I decided I think that it sounds good, <laughs> but I don't remember. So I also have Dark Stars, New Tales of Darkest Horror. And then I also have The Last House on List Street. Those are a few that I have that sound or sounded relatively interesting to me. My biggest disappointment. Again, I'm gonna have to check Goodreads. Okay, I'm literally gonna do the book that I just finished today. And I don't, I don't know, it's The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. I don't know, you guys. I was just like, everyone talks about how amazing this book is and how intense and scary and horror it is. It's very horrific, very graphic, very brutal, and the concept behind it, I think, so, so okay, yes, for sure my most disappointing because hearing what it was about, the concept behind it is amazing. Like, how does somebody even come up with it? But for me... It was just, the writing of it was way too smart for me. Oh, this is upside down. In the sense of, I just found myself, like, my mind wandering a lot while reading it. Because it just used, there was a lot of, I don't know, there's a lot of different characters that had points of views. And each one of them was written differently, so it was kind of confusing. Some of them I really didn't like the way that they were written, and like, I don't know, it just used a lot of big words. I am not a reader that does well with like, really having to think while I read. I love thrillers and horror that are just like, you know, rig written. I don't know how to explain it other than like, I found myself having to really like be like what does that word mean like there were several times in bed with my husband I would like because he is a lot smarter than me I'd be like what does this mean and there was even a time he was like I have no idea <laughs> I don't know what that means and I was just like okay so that just kind of let me down a little bit so that's what I'm gonna go with biggest surprise was probably the four wins like I said I had no I felt a little bit that it was going to be really good and I was really going to enjoy it. But like I said, historical fiction is not my thing and I did not expect to love it that much. To pick another book. Yes. This is another book that I recently just finished as well. And that is The Wives. The reason it was the biggest surprise is because I have not heard anybody say that they like this book. And I actually liked it quite a bit. I gave it a four. And it was... It was good. The ending was a little bit rough. Like the last 50 pages or so was very here, then here, then here, then here, then back to here, then here. And I was just like, okay, like, can we just... Like, I get that she was trying to do, like, a plot twist. But it was, like, not a full plot twist. And it was, like, the same thing. And it just kept guessing, like, trying to make you almost, I don't know, it probably was, if I had to think about it, was in a way trying to make us feel like question our own sanity <laughs> almost in reading it. I was surprised because I thought I was going to hate it like everybody else. And I didn't. I didn't hate it. Favorite new author, either a debut author or new to you? Probably Chris Hanna. <laughs> That, or like I said, because my favorite books, or Diane Chamberlain. I haven't read anything else by either one of them. 
yeah so probably those two newest fictional crush <gasps> probably let me double check we're gonna go with two jack that is his name jack from the four winds a grubby bad boy he's a good egg focus Another one would be Gabriel Nash from Where the Forest Meets the Stars. He's a good egg as well. I don't often get like crushes too much anymore on like characters and stuff. Because I was going to say I also read the Bromance Book Club. Obviously you get feelings in those types of books. I feel like as far as like men that I, in real life, would be like, yes, yes. Gabriel is also a very good egg. Little farm boy, good egg. Which is funny, because he sells eggs on the side of the road. <laughs> Newest favorite character. Do I want to just pick four wins again? Oh, here's a different one. I really enjoyed Dodger. She's a fun, quirky character that reminded me a lot of myself sometimes. I liked her a lot. Book that made me cry. I don't cry in books for whatever reason because I am like the biggest baby ever. Like literally everything makes me cry except books for some really weird reason that I can't figure out. But the ones that brought up the most, like, crying worth feelings would be, like, any of the books that I've already listed. These three, probably. The most? Four wins. Yeah. This one probably the most. This one honestly just like gave me the most anxiety. But yeah. Four wins. Book that made you happy. I don't read a lot of like happy. Let's see. Literally the only like kind of happy book that I read was The Bromance Book Club by Alyssa K. Adams. This made me happy. <laughs> and everything else I read was not happy so this is my answer most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received I have not literally the only bought books that I've bought this year are book of the month um let me just I have bought some really pretty ones hold on these are probably the prettiest um we have the removed I just really like like the geometrics of it and like the colors but it's also creepy <laughs> and then also we have the damage uh, again like just the fall vibes the colors the blue and orange kind of same-ish vibes going on I haven't like I said I only have been buying book of the month books and so there's nothing like super breathtaking. What books do you need to read by the end of the year? Okay, I'm going to kind of put out some of my plans here. I'm not going to specifically really give any books, but so my plan for the rest of the year is I, I really thought this year I was going to just try to get my physical TBR. My goal was to be under a hundred. And then I've just kind of been in a little bit of, I don't want to call it a slump, but I guess that's probably the best term to give it. Just like not feeling the want to really read anything. And I think what it is is because I'm trying to get this TBR down and I've said before that in the beginning I was just buying everything that people were recommending, which was a lot of YA, and I've just learned that it's not my thing. So I've just been trying to burn through all the books and so I'm just reading stuff that I don't really have any interest in. I don't really care about it. 
just like ugh. So now I just made the decision that I want to read 50 books by the end of the year. So it's not quite going to get me under 100, but I'll be almost at 100. So I want them to be a lot of my um, book of the month books because those are the only new releases that I buy <laughs> and they never read them as new releases because they just get put off and then by the time I get to them they're like a year or more older. So I want to prioritize my book of the month books and then there's some other just like challenge ideas that I have that can help me get through some other stuff. But I, like, even looking back on this challenge, it was hard to pick books, or I should say it was really easy to pick, like, my favorites and all that, because I'm like, I haven't read a ton of really good stuff. So anyway, so that is my plan. I don't have specific books I want to read, but I have a number. <laughs> I guess I should say book of the month books, so... I do specifically want to read. I'm always trying to participate, and I have done it thus far. This month, I'm keeping it to the very end, um, but I'm currently doing one right now, so I should finish it. But trying to do participate and do at least one book for um, the Buzzword Readathon that goes all year long. If you don't know about what that is, Let's talk about it in the comments. It's also fun. So this month is to read titles with the word last in it. So I'm trying to do that. And then I try to, I've always done on this channel, like if there's something I want to do, like a readathon or a book club or a video idea, I will never buy books to fulfill those needs. So there's a couple book clubs that I like to try to participate in. The number one being Kayla from Books and Lala. She has the Literally Dead book club and so I try to participate in hers. So like this month the book was to read Riley Sager's newest. Um, I always want to call it The Night Stalker. Um, Survive the Night I think is what his newest book is. So um, like, so those are things that I feel like I really want to read. So that's about it as far as actual books I'm wanting and like, really, oh, that is not true. That is not true. Oh, there is one also, one more. I bought this, I haven't showed it yet on this channel. I need to put, take a picture and put it on my Instagram. But look at how beautiful this is. I'm going to have to take some, here's some B-roll of this collection. Um, Costco did these maybe a year ago. They were these sets. So this one is the Friendship set um, and they're Word Cloud Classics. So they are these beautiful, they had, so there was like an adventure one and it had like Treasure Island and Peter Pan and those kinds of classics. They're in these leather bound as um Alice in Wonderland, The Secret Garden, Anne of Green Gables, and Little Women. Little Women is one I would really like to read but I don't know if that's going to happen this year but I will be reading next month The Secret Garden because I am going to here in Utah we have something called the Hale Theater. I think it's pretty well known. If you're into like plays and stuff like that, you probably know what the Hill Theater is. But they do the most amazing plays ever. And so anyways, we got, me and my sisters got gifted from my mom two Christmases ago a ticket to go see one play. And they are doing The Secret Garden. So we are going to see The Secret Garden on September 1st. And I'm like, okay, I have it. I want to read it before then. It's only 205 pages. It's super, super short, and I mean, I hear, like, little kids read this book. <laughs> like, it's for, so I'm like, I should be able to understand it, I would hope. Anyways, so that is the last one that I'm like, I have to read it. Okay, and lastly, my favorite book community member. Okay, um, I'm bad. I don't watch a ton of booktube, and I don't seek out small creators which is horrible of me because I am a very small creator I should be doing that I don't even feel like I should do this question <laughs> 
my favorites that I am subscribed to that I watch. I obviously, we all know I love Kayla, like, with everything that I am. I watch Gabby. I watch, um, I've been so excited. Uh, if you, you probably, I'm sure everyone here also knows. But Natasha has started coming back. And she's doing some really fun stuff on her channel, some different stuff. So I'm excited to continue watching her. Chelsea, um, she came back for a little bit and she's been gone again, which makes me sad. But I understand, like, it's hard. It's it's really hard. Obviously, I've been gone. I didn't even address it because I don't even want to go there right now. <laughs> and also, one of my all-time favorites, Whitney. And she is gone and... From what she says, she will not be coming back, but I can't talk about it. I think I'm finally starting to accept it, so we're not going to go there. I also love Allie. Those are about the ones that I will watch every one of their videos when they post. So tell me down in the comments some of your smaller booktube favorites. Let me know so I can find some new people to follow. That's always that's not all I'm following, but those are like my top the ones like I said that I will never miss a video. But anyways, that is what I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm really excited to try to get back into this. Hopefully we can do it. Expect from me. I don't know when I'm uploading this video, but the plan is hopefully to do some weekly reading, like themed weekly reading vlogs. That is what I'm hoping for. So if you're into that. Let's do it. 50 books, 50 more books by the end of the year. I hope I can do it. I can do it. It's about two books a week. So I plan to listen to one and read one every week. So we can do it. Okay. See you guys in the next one.